Let's review work in kinetic energy from Intro Physics 1. Well, the definition of work is your force times your distance when your force is being applied in the direction of the motion. Uh, here's your typical case with a block, pushing a block that weighs mg, and you have friction that's proportional to the normal force. Now the normal force is equal to the vertical downward force here since they have to cancel due to equilibrium, no acceleration or no motion in the y direction. Things start at rest and stay at rest with respect to the y direction. So n equals mg. And the frictional force is given by the coefficient of a fric friction times a normal force. And when you're pushing this block so that there's no acceleration, it's constant speed, then the frictional force here will equal the applied force. The capital F here, the applied force, will equal the frictional force. So these will be equal in magnitude. And it'll be mu mg for the force. And when you multiply it by the distance, that's your work. Well, you know, work has a neat definition because it's actually... A definition that really means work when you think about it. Now, here's a gentleman pushing boxes out and as he's pushing boxes out here's a another person sitting down that's studying for a college course. Well if you were paying people to push things so that you would get some work done let's think of the cases where you would not want to pay them. Well you wouldn't want to pay them yeah, first of all, they were walking with their arms outstretched like a zombie, and the force is equal to zero because their hands are pushing air. So zero times the distance that they walk gives you no work at zero. You also wouldn't want to pay someone that was pushing against the wall, and that force F was not being productive since the walls, you're not moving the wall anyway, and you're supposed to be pushing uh, crates or boxes in a warehouse or, or pushing things to clear out a desk or rooms. And here you have F times zero is zero. And of course you wouldn't pay someone that was simply hanging around actually doing nothing force-wise or distance-wise just standing there in one place. So zero times zero gives you zero. So the three ways to get zero, no work and no money. Well, let's look at what happens if we consider a one-dimensional case where the force may vary, and then we do an integral. And when we do this integral, we get the famous work energy theorem. Let's do this in outer space, where when we apply the force, there's no friction, and the effect will make the mass go faster and faster. So when you integrate f dx, we're pulling or pushing along the direction of motion, we place the f with ma, and then do this little trick here, A is dv dt, and then use a chain rule, dv dt is dv dx dx dt, and then notice dv dx here with dx dt is simply dv dx times the v. So you take that v, mv, and then this dx with this dx chain rule gives you the dv. Now we don't like to say these things cancel out, mathematicians will freak out when we say that. Uh, so we'll simply say applying a chain rule type logic. If you really want them to cancel, what you do is you don't take the limit. You let them be real deltas, then you can cancel anything you want, and then take the limit as a delta goes you know, smaller and smaller later. Well, anyway, this gives us the mv dv, and we can now integrate that, get 1 half mv squared, the famous result that you get the kinetic energy. In fact, this becomes a natural way to see the definition of the kinetic energy. We define work in a very, very logical way. And then we see that kinetic energy follows naturally from that. Now, if you apply the uh, principle when you have a mass already moving with some initial velocity, then you have to integrate from V1 to V2. And then you get the difference of the kinetic energy here when you look at the work that you apply. It goes into the difference of the kinetic energy. If you apply this principle to the Lorentz force, then we're going to do it here at the dot product to keep the most general case. So you, if the force is not in the direction of the motion, you have to take the dot product to project the force along that direction. So when we do that, we'll get the Lorentz force dot dr, and we're going to show you that this last term is zero. You already saw a problem where when you have here the velocity 
perpendicular to the magnetic field, you have a circular motion, and in that sense, the speed does not increase, it just changes its direction, so you're not gaining kinetic energy. But let's look at this more in more generality here, and if we look at that last term, that last term V cross B, the, the velocity across the magnetic field, we here use uh, the chain rule, kind of logic, dr vector dt dt, and then we replace the dr dt with the v vector, since that's the derivative of the displacement with respect to time, gives you the velocity. And then we notice that we have seen this triple cross product before, and we can cycle the vectors and have the same result. We already have shown that result. So if we do a cyclic change here, you know, kick the B over one, kick this V where the B is and bring this V over to the left, you get V cross V dot B and a vector cross with itself is zero. And therefore this shows that the magnetic field does not increase your kinetic energy. It just gets your direction to change. It doesn't change your velocity, it changes the direction. So therefore the work as applied to electromagnetic theory is simply given by the integral of the e dot dr part when we apply the Lorentz force. We don't have to worry about the magnetic field and the work done given by this integral is equal to the difference of the kinetic energy, the final minus the initial.